In today's video, I spent a hundred days in a snow only world. I came across a lot of challenges in this video, but you'll see how we deal with them. This video took a long time to make, so make sure you're subscribed. And if you're not, that's okay, but please do. Anyway, let's get started. So this is my first time playing anything 1.18 related, and we chose the new Snowy Plains biome, set our world, and this was our spawn. As you can see, I have the wrong skin on. Let's change that. There we go. But we have spruce trees, of course, the only tree we can get, I believe. We also have sugarcane, which I wasn't expecting, but turns out it can naturally spawn. You just can't grow it next to ice. And we also have these villages, which are really rare in the real game, but here, they're just everywhere, okay? So I stole all their crops, of course, and got myself a bed as well as destroyed this by accident. I thought I could pick it up. I can't. So I decided to make myself a pickaxe so I could in the future. The problem with the villages, though, is they don't have hay bales in them like every other village almost in the game. So for food, it was going to be quite tricky. But I thought I'd try my chance at killing this iron golem here to see if I can get some iron. And it dropped three ingots, which is very nice of it. I then basically raided everything from this village here. I'm sorry to the villagers. Found some beetroot soup, which I didn't know was a thing. How long has this been in Minecraft? Because I don't remember ever seeing it ever. It only heals free hunger, but I needed that as I was struggling for food already. I also came across our first giant cave, which I was just fascinated with because I haven't seen these before. And then I was just seeing what spawned, basically. We got some pumpkins, we got some flowers, and that's basically it other than grass and rabbits. I'm pretty sure like cows and sheep can't spawn in this area. And rabbits aren't going to be very useful as they're very annoying to kill. But what is going to be very useful are boats. Oh my gosh, boats on ice are so good. I think this is quicker than Elytra for traveling, and there's just ice everywhere. Also, I thought all igloos had that sort of tunnel underneath, but I went under this one, and then was like, oh, there's nothing under here. And then I got trapped under the ice, which was honestly quite terrifying. I couldn't find my way up until finally I did, and I had to sort of like use some dirt blocks to sort of get my way up, but it was quite scary to be honest. But I kept rowing on that ice and found quite a lot of villages, as I said earlier, and look, a pig. Wow. I didn't think they were going to spawn in, so I was quite delighted when I saw that. I also found some cows. And look, some sheep and some cats, but no one cares about the cats. Okay, maybe I care about the cats a little bit. But anyway, I found some bread, had a little sleep in there, punched an iron golem again, killed the iron golem, got some more iron. Lovely. I also found some leather armor in here to keep me warm in this snow wintry weather. Sped on over to another village where I found basically the same things except a polar bear this time, which is kind of scary. Got myself a saddle, but I don't think any horses spawn in. I hope they don't spawn in. In fact, the only other structures that do spawn in are the nether portals, as you can see here, and pillager towers, and I haven't found a pillager tower yet. However, I did find this nice looking area here, really close by to a village. We've got an igloo nearby. We've got this nice little mountain range. I thought, yeah, this is where I'm going to stay, and no one else is allowed here, so I killed this polar bear because he was in my way. I set up a little camp quickly, started cooking some potatoes as I only had one piece of bread left, and then started collecting some saplings for some trees as I wanted to make some of those big spruce trees as they're easy to harvest. But look, you can't play sugarcane here, so this is going to be a problem. Ice will make it break as well. And I also realized I was going to have the same problem with crops. That was going to be quite a big problem. So we have an idea to fix that though. And for that, we're going to need a lot of wood. I also got chased by this polar bear and its cub. So I decided to kill it because I decided to teach it a lesson. I also killed its cub as well because that's what you get when you mess with me. But on day three, I decided to make myself an iron axe now to cut down these trees a little bit quicker. However, I was having a problem with my saplings not growing for some reason. I realized soon after that it was because of the snow. But time to do some caving in this massive cave here. And oh boy, creepers are fun, aren't they? They kept appearing out of nowhere and nearly killing me. So from then forth, I started watching my back a bit more as I gathered up some coal, some iron, and a bit of copper as well. But like I said earlier, water turned to ice is going to be a bit of a problem because of our crops growing and they'll stop growing, etc. So rather than just put a slab over the water like most people would do, I decided to build a little building to hold our crops. A little sort of canopy, you should say. Is this completely unnecessary? Yes, it is. Am I going to do it anyway? Yes, I am. I thought I'd do this for our first few crops while I had the patience. In the future, I might just cover up the water with a slab as that stops it turning to ice. Also, I'm trying to record this voiceover right now as I have the hiccups. I could wait till later where I don't have the hiccups, but instead, I'm choosing to record it now. Anyway, I decided to get some bones for some bone mill so I could mill my trees. There's the hiccup. But as you can see right here, 
it wasn't working because I still hadn't realized that I needed to remove the snow to get these to grow. Hey, that rhymes. Maybe I should be a poet because I do not know I am. Well, anyway, I made some more bone mill with this hopper here and tried again. As yes, I still hadn't realized yet. You can see how angry I am there. I needed those trees to grow so I could finish off my farm. I was going to ridiculous extents to try and get some more bone mill, aka I was using shears to make some leaves to get some more bone mill. And I was still trying and it just wouldn't blooming grow. But it was around this point that I realized I am an idiot. I should remove the snow and within like 30 seconds I could say of that we had our first tree and then they just started all sprouting up and growing so yeah really regret that waste of time of making all that bone mill but we've now got loads of saplings and loads of trees meaning that we can basically get unlimited spruce wood which is very very nice and I finished off my little canopy here and put down some of our first crops I put a little campfire down first though because I thought it looked really nice and cozy and with this roof the water won't turn to ice yes I know a slab will do the same thing stop having to go at me in the comments I can see you already but we'll look better, hey? A slab or that? I think that. Anyway, I decided to go on a little adventure skirting around in my boat, which is really fun, by the way. I found some cows in a nearby village, put them in a boat, and then decided to bring them home with me because I'm going to need food, and beef is a very good source of food. I'm sorry, cows. You're going to breed a generation that is going to be slaughtered. Anyway, we brought them home one by one, but I left them in the boats for now. As one, I didn't have anywhere to put them, and two, I didn't have any wheat to breed them yet because, like I said earlier, all the villages don't have hay bales, meaning I had to grow all the wheat myself like a silly peasant rather than just using a hoe on them like a cool Minecraft YouTuber. Anyway, time to do some more adventuring. I went out in the world looking to see if I could find a pillager tower so I could get some different types of wood. I found some more villages and also I found my first igloo which had one of the ladders down. So I went inside, managed to get myself some apples, a cactus, a potion and a brewing stand. All very useful because you can't get these things very easily, especially the cactus. You can't get those at all anywhere else. I also found some better armor and some obsidian in this ruined portal here which I soon put on and then went boating off home to plant some more of the crops that I had gathered. I decided that my farm was very small though so I decided to extend it. Not building the exact same canopy but sort of like making it a little bit lower so it kind of looks quite cool. Look at it. Do you think it looks cool? I, I think it looks cool. Yes it's very like basic Minecrafty, but I don't have many blocks right now okay. However my tools were very much close to breaking so I had to go get some more iron to make some more tools of course. And whilst doing this, almost dying to creepers again because I I just, I'm terrible. Also, my axe broke and I couldn't make another one yet. So I had to kill all the mobs with my pickaxe, which is very painful. But we brought back all our iron and smelted it. Then got chopping down some more trees so we could finish off our farm here, which is looking rather splendid, if I do say so myself. Bringing us all the way to day 10. And on day 10, I bone milled some of my wheat so I could finally get enough to breed my cows. And you can see our little farm here looking quite fancy. Our cactus was planted. Our iron armor is being made. Look at us. We're starting to look like a bit of a Minecraft. Now, it only took us 10 days. My priorities are all over the place, but look how cute I look next to this campfire at night. I also found a sheep in the wild. I think it escaped from the village, but I decided to bring it home and put it in a boat. Oh, and I killed some glow squid and went mining for some deep slate as I was going to make another building. As I need the sort of storage to put all the crops we're going to be growing in as I feel like they're going to come in quite useful in the future. So I got building this sort of little tower, small storage building. It's not massive. It's quite tall for what it needs to be. It doesn't need to be this tall, but I just like making things look nice. And luckily, spruce wood is my favorite wood to build with. Unfortunately, we don't have any other wood to go with it, but if I was to get stuck with only one wood, it would be spruce wood. I used some different blocks other than cobblestone and spruce to make this thing, meaning it looked a little bit better than our original sort of weird farm canopy thing we've got there. And it also has a chimney. As I've decided, every building I build here needs to have a chimney as we are living in a snowy biome. But we had finally started growing enough wheat to breed our cows, so I thought, let's make a place for them to go and rather than build just you know a regular fence thing I decided to build this weird wall thing here it looks kind of cool I'm happy with it and we also added in the chests into our little storage room as well as a roof as well as it looked kind of ugly at the moment but the field is ready it's time to bring them cows in so I got bringing them in one by one and then we bred them up and we got our first baby cow which I instantly threw some snowballs at and speaking of snow, it started snowing and look how nice it looks when it snows. Oh, it's beautiful. I actually felt so cozy because it was snowing in real life here. And I was in my house feeling cozy, building a Minecraft house where I also felt cozy. It was just like, you know, the perfect situation. However, the snow is a bit of an issue. So I decided to start placing some little campfires around to sort of stop the snow from spreading so much. And also it just looks kind of nice having little bits of smoke everywhere. I also added in a path and got building another little canopy.
syrupy sort of thing. This time for our sugar cane, as we can't grow sugar cane either. And honestly, this space here will be enough sugar cane to last us for the entire 100 days. At least I'd hope so. I haven't automated anything yet because I'm scared to go to the nether. I think I'm going to get diamonds before I go to the nether for certain. I know this isn't the most efficient design of planting sugar cane, but it looks cool. And also we can have a little fire in the middle, which I really liked doing. And it's my Minecraft world, not yours. So get over it, okay? I don't know why I'm being so passive aggressive. I'm sorry. Please like the video. Please like my little tent there. Please like my little pickaxe. Why am I saying little pickaxe? It's not a little pickaxe. It's a regular iron pickaxe. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm starting to rant a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, I placed some of that stuff on there, which I've forgotten the name of. And then I went down deep into the cave where I was quite scared because these things are very open and a lot of mobs spawning here. You can see how close to death I am at multiple times. Creepers kept exploding, but I found my first diamonds. Yay! I only managed to get three on this entire trip, though, as it is scary, like I said, and I only have iron armor. But I also found a mine shaft, which was also full of mobs that kept attacking me and almost killing me. I, I, I was very scared. Look how close I am to death for all times here. There's that third diamond I was talking about, and I also got some coal. But these caves are very cool. It's just crazy how they keep going on and on. Like, you think they're going to end, but they don't. But I realized in the mine shaft, I could get oak wood. Yes, it's only the planks, but still, it's better than nothing. I also found myself some glow berries, which I could use for decoration as well as just, you know, some other things like rails, etc. before almost dying again to poison spiders and creepers. So I decided to go a bit higher and get some iron to take back home to smelt so that I could make more tools, etc. My cow herd was gradually increasing as we were breeding them constantly, and they're almost ready to slaughter, so I decided to stay in the area for now and build a mine entrance. Yes, I know there's a big old cave over there, but I want to build a strip mine because I'm boring. Now, I didn't know at this point, but strip mining in 1.18 is basically pointless. As you will see when I'm building this very nice looking mine here in a second, when we actually go down, um, yeah, it doesn't go well. But one of the good things about being in this snowy biome is that lanterns spawn in villages, and I use lanterns a lot and I just go and yoink them every time I need them. Also, when you're building things in a snow biome, you've got to take into mind that it snows every so often and snow will land on your builds and look weird unless you build it in a certain way. But after putting an unnecessary chimney on our mine entrance and also placing in a bit of a different flooring, we finally had it complete and it was looking quite nice. I even added a decorative minecart out front. How lovely. There we go. A mine shaft. Let's add in a small little storage area for all the cobblestone I thought I was going to get. And then we are ready to go. But of course, some pillagers showed up beforehand. One got in this boat with my sheep, so I killed him. No wandering trader yet, though, but that's okay. Hopefully, we'll get one a bit later. And I thought what would be fun for this mine shaft is that if we have a mine cart going down, because I never really do this, as it's always quite a lot of effort. But here's where everything went wrong, I dug into an absolutely massive cave. So what's the point in strip mining when that cave goes all the way down to like minus 40 or whatever the new level is? I can't actually remember. Is it minus 60? I don't know. Either way, we found a mine shaft with some cool stuff in it. We got an unbreaking two buck. And then I just went exploring, looking for anything really. The caves are really cool in this update. However, I don't get any of the dripstone caves or the lush caves in this because they are different biomes. So all I get are just the normal massive caves you'd get in a snowy biome, which are honestly quite boring. But I did manage to get hold of a few diamonds, which kind of weird. Diamonds only spawn in like clumps of one and two, it feels like in this update, which is kind of like annoying in a way. But also, I guess they had to do that to not make it overpowered. I used the six diamonds that I got to make a diamond pickaxe and a diamond axe as I'm going for tools over than armor here because this isn't hardcore. I don't mind if I die. But back into the cave where I mined up some more diamonds. But as you can see, not that many. It takes quite a while to find diamonds. But I did manage to get some oak logs, which are nice, from this mine shaft here, which is good to know. I also got a load of glow ink sacks because glow squids spawn like crazy here. I found a skeleton spawner, which I don't think I'll ever actually get to utilize as I don't really need bone meal that much, to be honest. And then I died. Yeah. And I respawned at spawn because I had changed my spawn point. So that was fun. I had to head all the way back, which is about a thousand blocks. Luckily, there's some villages on the way, which I could sleep in and also steal their food. And I also could make myself a boat out of the wood so that I could skid across the ice and get home a little bit quicker. But it still took quite a while, especially as I kept getting distracted and getting things like the gold and these tools from this chest here. But look, we made it home eating raw potatoes and we headed into the mineshaft and we did actually manage to find our stuff after a good 
good like minute or two looking around. But there it all is, apart from our enchantment points, which of course we, we did lose, which is sad. But that's what you get when you're just mining and not really paying attention. Creepers will come and kill you, especially when you only have iron armor. Maybe I should have made the diamond armor instead of these tools. But I spent the rest of the time just mining some more, getting some iron mainly, just so I could make some other things. I then went up, bred my cows again, and slaughtered a load of them this time so that I could make myself a load of steak, which is lovely. I also started gathering some materials to build a wall to place some other animals. Those animals, of course, are going to be some sheep so we can get some wool. And sheep need to eat grass, which unless I put them in a barn, they wouldn't be able to grow their wool back. So what I did was I placed a load of campfires around to melt the snow, meaning there's patches of grass for them to eat. The troubles of living in a snowy biome. Anyway, we went over to this village here and I collected the sheep I had seen earlier, put them in some boats and brought them home. Well, I actually had to bring one of them home as I had brought the other one home previously. Got myself some wheat so I could breed them up and lure them in. And they seem pretty happy in here. I bred them once they were both in and we now have baby sheep and a way to get wool, which is very useful. But I decided it's time to make some more crops and rather than build like canopies again like I did for my wheat, I've decided that I'm instead just gonna put slabs over the water so that all the crops can grow. Yes, it looks not very nice in comparison, but I, I need crops, okay? And I did decorate it. I placed down some bushes and some fences, etc. to keep it separated and it ended up looking quite nice, actually. I planted some melons, I planted some pumpkins, I planted some beetroots, carrots, everything, basically. I just thought, let's just go wild and plant everything. I also started making a staircase up to the little hill where I am planning to put my house, as well as making another big wheat farm over here as I'm using wheat wheat a lot to breed my animals. But on day 32, I fancied an adventure, so I went on an adventure. I went around villages, stealing lanterns, and I even found a pillager tower. So I made a shield, went in, and got basically nothing interesting from the chest, because they don't really ever have anything interesting. But what they do have are birch planks and dark oak wood, which is the only way I can get those at the moment, unless a wandering trader shows up and trades me a sapling. I planted all the crops I had stole from villages on my adventure, and then went back to the mine. But just to mine some deep slate, some oak planks, oak wood, and also some diorite? Wait, what, Joel? Yeah, that's right. I also went really far down until I hit lava so I could get myself some obsidian to make a nether portal a bit later. And you know what? It's really nice when you come up and it's snowing when you've been caving. I don't know, it just makes me feel a bit happy inside. But as you can see, I made myself a nether portal, then got instantly distracted and made myself somewhere I can go fishing. Now, the problem with fishing in this is that the water turns to ice and you can't fish in ice, so instead I had to make a little roof to cover up the water I was going to fish in. So I made a little fishing hut here, only took a little while to build, and I think it looks really cute, and of course, chimney. Normally I would time lapse a lot of these builds, but unfortunately the replay mod wasn't out yet when I was recording this. However, halfway through the video, they do actually release it, so later on you will see some time lapses. But I placed some barrels around, of course this is a fisherman's hut, and I went fishing for some cod. Why do I want cod? Well, you will see in a second. I also used a lot of my iron to make myself an anvil, then headed over to this village as, yes, the cod is for cats. I wanted to get myself some cats. I only actually wanted to get one cat, but then there was just lots of cats here, so I decided to tame them all. And now I own four cats. Here's me running back home with all four of my cats. And they're all different colors as well, which is really nice. I plopped them down in different areas around my little area. We put one there, our never portal, one there, our starter area, one where our house is going to be. And I gave two of them names of Alan and Susan. Yeah, really cat-like names. But on day 40, I decided it was time to go to the nether, and oh my gosh, what a horrible spawn. Luckily, I only needed blackstone for now, so I managed to mine some up, and then I headed home and started chopping down some trees. I spent a full day chopping down all my trees. As that's right, I'm gathering materials to build my house. I got some sand for some glass. I found an area I wanted to build, and I brought in my camera account. As like I said earlier, the replay mod wasn't working yet, but we got working on building our house, doing the old-fashioned camera account time-lapse method. And you can see why I got the diorite earlier. We used some dark oak, we used a lot of spruce, and we built a very nice house with a massive chimney. And there it is. I'm quite happy with it. I think it looks rather fancy. And of course, I wanted oak floor because the rest of the house is made of spruce. So I started placing some oak, then I ran out of oak. So I had to head into the mine to get oak. I had to go mining for oak. No one ever says that. I do though, because I'm in a snow only world. I made myself a little chest system, brought all my other stuff over and started decorating the inside. I also got working on a second floor of a staircase up to it and then went into the mines for some more oak once more and then went back and finished off the top floor as well. Of course, 
being oak. And as you can see, it's looking okay on the downstairs. The upstairs is kind of empty, but the downstairs is looking really nice. I even decided to dye some sheep and get some wool and make a carpet, which I never do, but there you go, a carpet. Also to label all my chests, I decided to use some glow ink sacks to make some glow item frames because I just had so many glow ink sacks. And thanks to 1.18, I don't have to light this place up like crazy. Mobs just won't spawn. It's awesome. I love that about 1.18. But what I don't love is sorting chests. This took quite a while. I spent a few days just doing this. And then finally, we had all our items sorted and we had a bed upstairs looking lovely. I decided to make myself my first diamond armor, some diamond leggings, as well as another diamond axe as mine was going to break from chopping all those trees earlier. And now it's time we find that nether fortress. I started bridging across this horrible, horrible biome until I found this area, which had a ghast in it, which instantly attacked me. Yay. But I killed it because I am powerful. I found a crimson forest and collected some wood. And I also found a warped forest right next to it and collected some wood and also killed an enderman for my first ender pearl. But despite having fun collecting materials and almost dying to piglins multiple times because they are most powerful when you only have terrible iron armor on, I didn't manage to find myself a fortress. So of course I took my anger out on this baby child piglin here and killed it because it deserved it. And then headed back home because I'd given up and I wanted to sleep in my bed. I also ran out of dirt so I went to get some more dirt and went bridging off in a different direction this time. And oh boy... I hate it. I almost died here as well, as you can see, as I fell down here. Two hearts. Not good. I probably should have taken that as a sign to turn back, but oh no, I kept going. But as you can see, I've explored every biome in the nether, and I've still not found a fortress. And then, of course, I died. Yeah, to a piglin. It was really far away. I know where it is but it's really far away. I decided to get some bread and head back though. I also took some spruce planks with me so that I could keep moving. Almost died to a magma cube there, which is not fun. And then I sort of headed into this area where I got shot by a skeleton and died again. Um, that was good. So I made myself some pork chops, said hello to my cat, and then followed my route back, which honestly seemed like a war. The amount of gas that was shooting me on this narrow platform, it was terrifying. The amount of times I nearly died to ghasts, skeletons, piglins, everything was trying to kill me. The never is a horrible place. I, I hate it. You can see how much I'm struggling here, but we managed to get past the gas somehow using some blocks, and I managed to actually get to where I had died, which is right here and got most of my stuff, although some of it had been stolen by these pigmen here, and then I died again. And as you can see in the chat, I, I was quite frustrated. I, I was very frustrated, in fact, so much so that I decided to give up. I talked to Susan, and she said, it's not worth it. So I decided to make myself some new iron armor, some new tools, and I did that instead, because honestly, what is the point anymore? Instead, I decided to work on a new project, and that project was Project Igloo, where I'm going to bring some villagers over so I can get some better tools, as I hate mining at the moment, especially in this awful biome. Of course, the igloo had a chimney on top of it, and it was looking quite cute. I was very happy with my igloo. I also made another path up to my house at the top with some stairs here. Also decorated inside the igloo, so we could have four villagers in there if we wanted to. Got myself some composters, as we were going to have some farmer villagers, and started boating them back over and then I did the whole thing with the villagers which is very painful because they don't do what you want them to do and they're really annoying I also got my minecart from my minecart chest as well as all my rails because I was never going to use those and then I started to get them in the hole which obviously went terribly and they all started to turn to fishermen because of all the barrels I had around it just doesn't work I hate villagers I need to put them in holes I kept forgetting to put them in the holes they kept saying it's a bloody fishermen okay I need to calm down for a second so I destroyed every barrel I'd placed in the area and I managed to get the villager finally back into a boat and then I got stuck in the ice but then finally I managed to get him out of the ice and into a minecart and we started gradually pushing him along until we got him in the blooming house. Oh my gosh, pain, just pain. This took way too long. I messed up. I should have dug him in a hole, I know. But look, he's in the igloo. He's a farmer and he's staying there and we can trade with him. Lovely. I wanted a trade which didn't have beetroots on because beetroots are terrible for trading. So I got wheat and potatoes for my first villager, gathered up a load of wheat, traded with him, and got some emeralds. Our first what a deal trade. Lovely. What a deal it was. I also managed to trade some pumpkins with him as well. And that's probably going to be our best method is farming pumpkins, not melons, because melons suck. No offense to all melon lovers out there, but pumpkins are way better. I'm sorry. It's the truth. Just deal with it, all right? And after a while of trading, we managed to get ourselves a load of emeralds, so much so that I decided to go get my 
myself another farmer villager, which of course I had the same struggles with, except this time he didn't have a barrel to go to. Instead, for some reason, he went on top of the igloo. I have no idea why. It makes no sense, but I got him in the minecart and we managed to get him into his hole. I broke the minecart, of course, and he teleported out once again, ruining my day. I feel like every time I play Minecraft and I've got to get a villager into a hole, I, I lose like a few days off my life because of how stressful and annoying they are. But look, he's in there. Finally, you silly fool. Trade me carrots. Trade me wheat. That's what he actually did eventually trade me carrots and wheat. So I locked in that trade, of course, as that is quite a useful trade. And I traded with him some carrots. But my carrot farm wasn't actually that big. So I made myself a new carrot farm, which meant I got twice as many carrots as I previously did maths. I also added in another potato farm as well as this carrot farm as I needed more potatoes as, as well as carrots. I then went mining for some deep slate. I don't know why I was getting this deep slate. Just kidding. I do. I went up to the surface, made myself that potato farm I was talking about and went looking for more villagers. Yes, I know. I don't know why I'm doing this. Maybe I just like pain. I don't know. But either way, we took that villager home and we just left him for a while as I went to gather some more materials, some coal to do some smelting. And I also did some trading while I was doing this, just doing a lot of farming, smelted myself some smooth stone, also decided to make myself a little bone mill making machine here where I could put all my leftover seeds in as I was getting quite a lot. And then it's time for another time lapse. This time it's just a little hut here, which I built really quickly. Maybe that was actually too quick. But inside this hut, we're going to have our smith villagers where we can get some tools, we can get some armor. And I almost instantly burnt it down. So I decided, you know what? Fire's not good. Let's use campfires instead as they can't burn stuff down. But it just doesn't look as cool. But we have two spaces for villagers here, one for our weapons and one for our armor. I also decided to make myself a big old pumpkin farm as pumpkins are very, very good for trading. You only need five of them in comparison to the 25 carrots that you need or the 25 wheat or 25 potatoes. I also got a rabbit in here and tried to kill it, but then my villager escapes and turned into a blooming fisherman. I hate you villagers. But for this building, I needed two. So I had to go get another villager, get him in my boat, which is always a struggle. Just kidding, that one just walked straight in. Also collected some pumpkins on the way as they spawn in the wild. But to make this weapon smith and this armor smith, I'm going to need a blast furnace and also a grindstone. So I placed those down and then I got distracted with my pumpkin farm for a little bit and placed all these walls here as I wanted to actually extend my pumpkin farm. But then we got working on the villagers and this time I did it well. I got them in a minecart in a hole and then I pushed them up and this was so much easier and just I don't know what I was doing earlier. I just wasn't thinking. I do realize that my stress and anger towards villagers is my own doing because I'm expecting them to be good and helpful when they are never that. So let's just keep them in holes and trade with them for some iron axes because I need to level up the trade so I can get to the diamond stuff. This did mean I had enough iron boots to, you know, feed a family. That makes no sense. Um, but yeah, I had to go and get myself a load of more emeralds. So I did some farming, started trading up these guys. However, this one needed iron to level up, whereas the armorer here only needed emeralds so I could buy my myself some chain leggings which I am never going to use. So I needed my emeralds. Time to do some farming. I bone milled up some of the pumpkins as you can see here. Bought some more of those useless chainmail leggings and then threw them in the fire pit here, which doesn't actually burn them, it just makes them hover. But look, I can trade for a chainmail helmet now. Yay! Thank you so much, villager. Let's kill some cows to take our anger out. Yes, die cows, die. But I traded with the villager to get some more of those chainmail helmets. And finally, we can get some diamond leggings with terrible enchantments. Woohoo! Screw this. I'm going on an adventure. Just kidding. I need to come home as I forgot all the steak that I just cooked. Let me get that steak. And then let's go on an adventure, baby, to collect pumpkins and also explore weird terrain. And also, the main reason was actually to go caving. I found this cave in the middle of nowhere and I started collecting iron. I needed to trade iron with that villager, so I had to mine a lot of iron. I killed myself an enderman and then died to a creeper in the middle of nowhere. I don't know where I died. I, I have no idea. I, I was very angry, as you can see here. Very, very angry. Um, but I started heading home, stole this bed after sleeping in it. And um, yeah, we, we, we boated home, but I couldn't get my stuff. It was gone. It's just gone. I had mined a lot of iron as well. It was all gone. So that's fun. Either way, let's breed up some cows, shall we? And mine some pumpkins. The humble life of a farmer. It's day 72, guys. I threw a snowball at my armor, a villager, to take out my anger, then realized that's going to make his trades worse. So that was just a mistake. Um, so much so that I decided to throw all my stuff there and just kill myself for a bit of fun. Um, 
Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get back to farming pumpkins. And look, this is my armor I'm wearing. It's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. I've been playing this for 73 days and I'm wearing gold and leather armor. What is wrong with me? Anyway, time to mine some more iron. Am I right? Yay, iron is fun. Ooh, and diamonds as well. Lovely. I love diamonds. And then I died again. Um, which, as you can see here, angered me even more. I, I, what am I doing? I almost quit, but I didn't because I'm on day 74, I, 75, whatever it is. I don't care. I'm just mad. I had to eat some rabbit, which I hadn't even eaten before in Minecraft, I'm pretty sure. And then luckily I actually managed to find my stuff this time and put back on my useless gold armor and went mining some more iron and some diamonds and more iron. But seriously, what is wrong with me? I've, I've got two diamonds there. That's it. It's useless. I also didn't have enough cows to kill for beef, so I just went back to farming pumpkins and I actually managed to buy myself some diamond boots. Woohoo! Look, and now I am a pro Minecraft YouTuber. Uh, but no, I'm pathetic, like I typed in the chat there. I did actually manage to trade some iron with our weaponsmith, though, to trade up his trades, which is very nice. And we got, of course, a flint trade for one emerald. 23 flint. I, I killed some cows to get some frustration out. And then I went mining for gravel. After about 10 minutes, I managed to get one emerald. This is not going to work. Instead, I decided to trade with my other dude to get myself some other diamond armor with fire protection one and fire protection two. Terrible. I also realized I could trade some more iron with the weaponsmith and I managed to get myself a diamond axe with efficiency two. I then traded with him some flint and two diamonds to get our final weapon, which is a knockback one diamond sword. It's not worth it. None of it was worth it. It was all a waste of time, but my mood soon changed and I managed to install the replay mod. And look, we can do cool sort of shots now like this where I'm wearing my useless armor, which I actually did manage to upgrade through farming and we only have the diamond helmet to go now. I also decided it was probably time we made ourselves an enchanting table as we haven't died in a while and we've got 18 enchantment points. But for the enchanting table, I needed two diamonds, which I had just given away. So I went mining for those diamonds. I also managed to get myself a pumpkin and then I went caving in a far off place, which went terribly last time. But this time I had some diamond armor, so I was feeling a bit more safe as I needed diamonds and I'd explored my entire other cave pretty much it felt like. And I did manage to get some as well as some other cool things in this chest here, including another name tag. And then we headed home without dying. I know, success. I even got five diamonds when I only needed two. So I could make myself an enchanting table, put some books up around it, and we could get level. Just kidding, we can't. There's snow around it, which means I'm going to have to build a roof over this thing unless I want to clear up snow every time. I also called my cat Jane, made myself a spyglass, looked at Jane, who just stares into nowhere and said, what a sad little life, Jane, because we love references here on the Smallish Beans channel. I also managed to finally buy myself my final diamond helmet, made myself a diamond pickaxe, and it's never time, baby, as we're going looking for that fortress again. Oh yeah, let's get it. I actually found all my stuff again, which is very nice. Nearly died finding it, by the way, because this area is just the death zone, apparently. I did decide to not attack the pigmen, though, because he did have some of my armor, but it was mainly iron armor, which is terrible. And look, a fortress. It was so hidden and hard to find, but I found it, and we got all the never war. We killed some blazes. I even got an achievement for going in a bastion when I didn't even go in one, and I killed blazes. I got some blaze rods. I found the blaze spawner. Everything was going well suddenly. We're only on day 82 and I was getting my blaze rods. Lovely. If this was a speedrun attempt, it would be the longest speedrun ever. But I managed to find some other cool stuff on my way home, which took a long time as I lost my path, which I had used to get there. But we got home. We obviously went farming some pumpkins and we also did some villager trading. This time, I just went to the village and started trading with this cleric because I didn't want to go kill Enderman as I hate that. Instead, I went for the trading method as it's a lot easier. I also traded some sticks with this Fletcher here to get some more emeralds as the farming was taking too long and we managed to get a decent amount and we could trade up this cleric by buying lapis and glowstone. However, it's not guaranteed that it gives you an enderpearl trade, but luckily we got lucky and this dude, after trading up here, gave us an enderpearl trade for emeralds for one ender pearl. You know what? It's a lot, but it's worth it. Rather than killing Enderman, I could trade my pumpkins, my potatoes, my carrots, and I got so much XP from enchanting that I actually decided to enchant my diamond chest plate and got protection four. Let's go. Things are going the way of me right now. So much so that it's time to actually have a time lapse. Oh, look at that. A little enchanting area room. How lovely. How quaint. It's another snow thing. Yes, I just forgot the name of igloos there for a second, but look, it's an enchanting igloo. It's got some glowberry 
berries in the inside. It's lovely. I can enchant things on it. I decided to enchant my diamond leggings and I got blast protection four. Yay. That's actually not bad because I keep dying to creepers. I also bought my way up to 14 ender pearls, changed them into eyes of ender. And I was going to buy this bow from our Fletcher, but instead I tried enchanting one. I managed to get a power four bow with punch two. Quite good. And it's that time, baby. Time to find the fortress and get killing that ender dragon. I didn't actually want to explore the end. What I actually wanted was all the XP the ender dragon dropped. So I set off with my 14 eyes of ender, which should be plenty apart from the fact they kept breaking, leaving us with 12 by the time we actually found the portal, which was right here. And I dug down and look, I spy and this is the best fortress I've ever been in. I wandered around for about five seconds and found the portal. It was right near where I dug in. Beautiful and it's a good job we brought those extra 12 eyes of ender because the portal was empty. But there we go. Let's head in to the end. Lovely. Time to kill the ender dragon and we obviously got a terrible spawn because what's my luck? Destroyed all the pillars which is really easy because I've done this so many times now. Shot the ender dragon a bit, hit it with my axe a bit, killed it, got all the XP. Job done! The ender dragon fight is just boring to watch in my opinion so I just try and skip it and make it as quick as possible as it's really not that hard even on hard mode I find that killing a wither isn't even that hard there's nothing really that challenging which is why I'm looking forward to that new mob the watcher or whatever it's called as that looks genuinely scary in comparison to these things but as you can see there I did some enchanting I brought back the dragon egg I bred up some sheep and I went to villages why did I go to villages because I wanted to steal all the beds I stole all the beds from multiple villages nearby plopped them in a chest here and and then went out again and stole more beds from other villages. Villagers must hate me. I steal their beds, their friends, and yeah, they just must really dislike me. Anyway, time to go to the nether as I thought, you know what? One thing we haven't got is netherite. So I went looking for some ancient debris, managed to use all the beds that I had there to get eight bits of ancient debris in total. I do have another set of beds I could use, but this place is really far away. I've got to go on a massive journey to get to a biome where I can actually go looking for ancient debris as lava is just all underneath me for ages in the nether. But I was really low on food, so I decided to breed up some cows do a bit of trading so I get myself some golden carrots instead of eating steak and then I did another little time lapse of a little building here as I wanted to get myself a toolsmith so I could get some more tools a diamond finding is boring so I stole this villager here brought him all the way home got him into the little place which took quite a while as I decided to go really weird route I don't know why I decided to take him all the way around my house here but I did we got him in and he's still a cleric and I, I, he won't change. I went and destroyed his workstation. He, he didn't change. I even went and destroyed all the other workstations. And, and he still wouldn't change. It, it was actually quite annoying. Look, I even destroyed this one here, which isn't his workstation. He didn't change. I don't know why he didn't change. So I gave up decided to cut some pumpkins instead and took my smithing table over here and converted this guy into a toolsmith where I bought myself a load of pickaxes then realized I had to trade iron and I have no iron. So into the cave we go with our fortune two pickaxe this time to get myself some iron. And this was a lot easier with fortune two. Managed to get myself a load of iron and we got trading with the toolsmith and we managed to get some diamond hose as well as look at this, a diamond shovel. Yay. I traded with him for some diamond shovels. I enchanted the diamond diamond shovel to get some better enchantments and efficiency too. We got efficiency free. Woohoo! I also traded some sticks with this villager here so I could trade him up even further and our pickaxe is an efficiency two pickaxe. What is even the point? What is the point? Anyway, I unenchanted it and re-enchanted it and we managed to get fortune free, which is very nice. I then shot an arrow into the air and tried to catch it and I did catch it because we're on day 99 and this world is over. A hundred days of Minecraft in a snowy biome. And I said goodbye to Alan and here it is, our little world. I think we did quite a lot in this time. I'm happy. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like. Goodbye.